Tom said yes. Um, and then I'm gonna let you take it away, Taylor. And then whenever you need me, I'm I'll be right here. All right, sounds good. All right, everyone, welcome to Fire Friday. Today is April fifth, twenty twenty four. Uh, there's there's a lot going on in the world right now for sure. Um, so we will be. We will be praying um, for quite a few things tonight. Uh, first, I'd just like to invite the Lord to have his way. So thank you, Papa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this time with you. We invite you to have your way. <sighs> Let your will be done, Lord, on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, something that Kristen and I were speaking about earlier was, and we actually talked about the other day as well, is how we've felt, especially lately, um, Holy Spirit really pressing in on praying in tongues, praying in the spirit lately. And with everything going on, um, I just want to he was showing me today quite a few scriptures to just help reiterate the importance and the blessing really that it is that we have the ability through Holy Spirit to pray in tongues. Um, so I'd like to start this Fire Friday off by um, going through a few scriptures that showcase um, the power of praying in tongues. Um, the first scripture that we are going to look at is Romans 8, and it'll be verses 26 through 27. And I will wait a, a few seconds. Um, just let me know when you guys are there in the chat, and then I will I will take it from there. And I will be in the amplified uh, version for all the scriptures. <laughs> Good timing, Trisha. That Holy Spirit flow. Trisha just asked, which translation will I be using right when I said that? All right. Oh, and Kristen added the uh, Passion Translation. So I will read that after I read the Amplified Version as well. Is everyone else ready? Romans 8, 26 and 27. All right. And I love how um, in the Amplified Version, it has the subheading of our victory in Christ. And then it says, in the same way, the spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness. We do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should. But the spirit himself knows our need and at the right time intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings too deep for words and he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because the spirit intercedes before god on behalf of god's people in accordance with god's will and then i'm going to read the passion translation that Kristen shared and in a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us and our human frailty to empower us in our weakness. For example, at times we don't even know how to pray or know the best things to ask for. But the Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional sighs too deep for words. God, the searcher of the heart, knows fully our longings, yet he also understands the desires of the spirit because the holy spirit passionately pleads before god for us his holy ones in perfect harmony with god's plan and our destiny oh hallelujah that's so good 
And so, um, so what does that tell us? That tells us that not only is praying in the spirit, not from our carnal minds, but it's the perfect prayer and the perfect timing and perfect alignment with his perfect will. And so I just, I, with the times that are coming up, you know, there's going to be a lot of things that we don't, we're not going to be able to see what's going on. So we won't even know what to pray for. You know, there's a lot of things that God has in motion right now where prayer is needed, but we, we don't know what it is. You know, it says, it calls it mysteries. (laughs) We have to seek them to know, but there's some things where we, when you get that, you know, just that feeling that, oh, I want to, you know, I feel like I want to pray in the spirit, please do so because you're getting that impulse for a reason. And like I said, Kristen and I were speaking earlier today and that impulse has been coming more and more frequently within the past week. So, and it's not just you, you know, it's, it's per it's perfect in every way possible. The prayer that you are praying, your carnal mind couldn't even, wouldn't even know to pray these things. So that is, that is definitely one benefit to praying in tongues, praying in the spirit is allowing Holy spirit to pray what needs to be prayed because we just don't know we're, you know, we just don't know, but praise God for him because he does. And he intercedes on our behalf, but he also intercedes on the other saints behalf. So you could be praying for someone you've never even met. Yes. And Kristen added better than man made declarations alone. Yes. Because he's declaring and praying things that we probably didn't even know was going on with that other person. You know, a lot of people go through things and keep it to themselves and don't tell anyone about it. Well, you can't hide from Holy Spirit. If you're going through it, he knows about it. So just praise God. Um, Trisha said, yes, I find myself praying all the time. I have to be careful because it's just, I was going to say second nature, but now nah, it's my first nature now. Hallelujah. Yes, it is now our first. I love, I love that thinking. It is our first nature now because it's his nature. You know, we are, we are in the minds of Christ. Now we have Christ like minds. We are in a Christ-like spirit because Holy Spirit is Christ. So hallelujah, that is now our first nature. The old man is dead and gone. I love it. That's awesome. Um, and then he pointed out another scripture for me. And that is Ephesians 6, 16 through 18. And like I said, I'll be reading in the Amplified Version first. So just let me know when you guys are all there. And then I will read that. Ephesians 6 verses 16 through 18. And I will be reading from the Amplified Version. All right. Margie said she's there. Awesome. Trisha's there. All right. Okay. And then Kristen shared it in the chat for anyone who isn't there yet. And she shared the amplified version as well. Ephesians 6 verses 16 through 18 amplified above all lift up the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God with all prayer and petition, pray with specific requests at all times on every occasion and in every season in the spirit. And with this in view, Stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for all God's people, which um, is God's people. I have a little message there saying that it is the saints as well for the little note. And I love I love how this is under the subheading of the armor of God, because what this is, what does that say? That says that praying in tongues, praying in the spirit 
is a part of our armor. We are, we are literally praying for things against attacks that we don't even know is coming our way. We are, we are sending out the hopes that we don't even know what we're sending them to. We, we just don't know. He could use it however he wants. It's that powerful. It's a weapon. And I honestly, I truly believe, oh, you know what? Kristen just shared the passion translation. So let me read the passion translation for Ephesians 6, 16 through 18. In every battle, take faith as you, as your wraparound shield for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. Embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance, like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies, and take the mighty razor-sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. Pray passionately in the spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times. Pray the blessings of God upon all his believers. Yeah, so even in that, he's saying that when we're, we're praying in the spirit, we're praying for other believers. We're praying for the saints as well. And we are praying for things that we, we just have no idea about. And it's, <laughs> it is, it's a weapon and it's an armor. It's both because it can be used however Holy Spirit wants to use it. And there's so many times when we, we don't, we don't know what's happening. But he does. He always knows. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't, you know, he's always watching over us. So it, <laughs> it is so vital. But especially with the time that we're coming into that, you know, we already are in. Um, we have to armor up and we have to we have to be ready for battle. And this is being battle ready, praying in the spirit. Hallelujah. Um, and I also, um, I also was sent to the Strong's for um, the word spirit in there. Let me pull that up. But it's Strong's number 4,151. Mm -hmm. And let me see if I can pronounce this right. Wrongs 4,151. And it's pronounced Mio Ma. And I'm sorry if I tore that up, but that's that's how I that's how I've pronounced it right now. Um and so it means so with that word spirit right there means spirit but it also means wind and breath and if you go down to the Thayer's Greek lexicon and go down to section 4b that's where you will find this scripture specifically which is important when you're looking up the definitions and the meanings of these root words so and it means to come to be in the spirit under the power of the spirit. And then it says in a state of inspiration or ecstasy by the power and aid of the spirit, the spirit prompting. So when you um, get the promptings of the spirit to pray in the spirit, you know, it's not something our carnal mind is just coming up with. And I know there's a lot of people who have, who've had to tear down those lies um about you know well how do i know if i'm just making up words or not well <laughs> how do you normally speak i mean you know when you're uh i know kristen has used this example many times but when you have a baby who's trying to say words for the first time are you going to sit there and correct them every which way or are you just going to encourage them to keep trying and going because they're getting some form of the word out and that's how we are when we first are learning to pray in the spirit. You know, there's there are some people that when they get it, 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 they just take off with it. But there's other people where they have to continue to tear down these walls 
that are blocking the faith for them to pray in the spirit and to really let Holy Spirit flow. And, you know, there's it, whichever, whoever you are in the, at the end of the day, it is through Holy Spirit that you are having these prayers come out. Now, does that mean he's going to take over your mouth? Absolutely not. Because we have free will. We need to open our mouth and he will prompt what comes out of it. But we still have to be a human being and use our bodily functions for him to use. Um, it's just like when we're told to, you know, be the hands and feet of Christ. You know, if Jesus says, oh, you need to go bless your neighbors with this. Does that mean I can just lay in bed? and expect him to lift my body up out of the bed and take, you know, force my body to do it. No, I have to come into agreement with it and I have to move my body myself and then <laughs> do what he's asked me to do. Um, he's a gentleman. He is never going to force us. It is always going to be um, our choice to do it or not to do it. So that was honestly, that was a lie I had to tear down for myself when I first began trying. I, I'll tell you what, I fought, I wrestled with understanding this for almost a year before I started praying in the spirit. So there's not a lie that the enemy is telling you that he probably, that he didn't tell me. I mean, I, I thought that the Lord would just take over and Holy Spirit would just force these things out of me. And but that would be manipulation. And we know that the word says that manipulation is what a form of witchcraft and our God doesn't operate in witchcraft. So um, you do have to play your part in it. Uh, he's not just going to take over you and do it, do it for you in that manner. Um, but I definitely I definitely know that, you know, it's. It's one of those things that when you first hearing the words coming out of your mouth, you're just like, excuse me, I have no idea what I just said. But praise God, he says you won't understand what he just said because it's a language just to God from Holy Spirit. So when your carnal mind starts hearing these things come out and it tries to tear you down by the by the flesh, your flesh isn't going to understand spiritual matters. Your carnal mind isn't going to understand spiritual matters. So. Um, what I have, what I was told that blessed me so much, um, and I've told it to many other people, when you start getting those thoughts to try to stop praying in the spirit, because you're just like, this isn't making sense. This has to be wrong. Just know that your flesh, your carnal thinking and the enemy would not be trying to push you into stopping unless you were doing it because <laughs> It's just like when you sin, your flesh is going to let you continue to sin. The enemy's going to continue to let you to sin, right? Because why would they want you to stop? So I, when you start getting those thoughts of, I'm not doing it right, or this sounds wrong, take that as a, okay, the enemy's trying to push against this. My flesh is trying to push against this. My carnal thinking is trying to push against this. I know this is biblical. I know this is truth. So I'm going to keep doing it because why would it be pushing against it unless it was a threat? So that was something that just blessed me so much because I would always stop when I started because of my carnal thinking and my flesh and the enemy telling me you're not doing it right. Well, guess what? Other people don't know if you're doing it wrong either. So might as well go for it, right? It takes practice and that's okay. But, you know... For me, I had a lot of walls up blocking that faith to even do it. And I had to tear down those lies and praise God that the word is the truth. That is a double-edged sword that will cut down those lies. And isn't that what we just read as our armor of God in Ephesians 6, 16 through 18, the spirit of truth. So if you are, if you need, if you would like some help tearing down the lies of the enemy, please just reach out to the bell tower because our swords are sharpened and ready to go. And we would be happy to cut that fool up for you. So, and then I do have 
two more scriptures um, that Holy Spirit led me to. Um, and I know that, well, first I'll just tell you the scripture. So the next scripture is 1 Corinthians 14, 4, and I'll be in the amplified version. And let me check the chat real quick. Yes, exactly, Margie. Margie said the enemy can't understand it and doesn't want you to speak it. Yes, the enemy is trying to take that, you know, take that weapon away from you because you, you're you cutting him up with it. Like, <laughs> Holy Spirit's cutting him up. All right. And Devin said, yes, I started with like three repeating sounds I kept hearing in my spirit. Now it's an extensive vocab. Glory to God. <laughs> right yes i know so many i i've heard many testimonies where someone um would have only a word or two but they just kept on repeating it and and you know what <laughs> that's a perfect segue hallelujah thank you devin that's a perfect segue into first corinthians 14 4 so if you guys just let me know when you're there i will read that and i like i said i'm in the amplified translation for that all right let's see who all is there okay margie's there devin Yes, 1 Corinthians 14, 4, and I'll be reading it out of the Amplified. All right. Sorry, I was trying right, to... So 1 Corinthians 14, 4... Oh, wait. Right, Taylor. Sorry. Is it? Is there any way that you can You're see good. if you can send a uh, a link for Margot? I tried to send the two links to her, but I don't know if she can't get in. <laughs> I'm trying trying to do. It. I don't know. I don't know why. Um, this is having an issue, but it is. Yeah, no problem. Let me jump into Messenger real quick. Thank you. She normally does this for us. <laughs> she normally does this portion. And I'm like, I can't get it to. Here I add that. Girl, I know why you be drinking all that water now. I'm like thirsty. <laughs> right? I mean, your throat can go out. <laughs> go out like right away I'm like yeah. <laughs> holy spirit's like I told you to fill up your water he did he did he sure did tell me to fill up my water all right let's see okay I was able to send her the link in the passcode so we will we'll wait a second to see when she jumps in Now, you might have to keep an eye out if she gets stuck in a waiting room. I don't see her yet, and I might have missed it. <sighs> Axel, get my, I'm trying to get my, <laughs> my gift <laughs> <soul, but, huh? laughs> I don't see her in there. This is my chair. That's it. No, no, no. That's my chair. No. <laughs> no. <Ma. Ma. laughs> okay, I don't see her, but I'll keep an eye out for her. Okay. Yeah, Um, I sent her the link, and then it should have the passcode in there, too. So, hopefully, hopefully she'll be able to get in. All right. 1 Corinthians 14, 4. And I want to go back to Devin's uh, segment to this. Um, 
she said she kept on repeating only um, three words, kind of building or extending her vocabulary. Well, in 1 Corinthians 14, 4, it says, one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but one who prophesies edifies the church, promotes growth and spiritual wisdom, devotion, holiness, and joy. So I looked up that word edify, which is Strong's number 3,618. And <laughs> I'm going to attempt to pronounce this word. <laughs> okay. Oiko domeo is the word. And that means to, the definition of that is to build a house. And then the usage is I erect a building, build figuratively of the building up of character. I build up, edify, encourage. So the reason why Devin's was such a great um, segue was because she was literally, oh, hey, welcome, Margo. Glad you could make it. <clears throat> um, but the reason why what Thank Devin you. said was, uh, yeah, glad to have you. But um, Devin, her saying that she was just saying the same three words and then her vocabulary would, you know, get bigger you know become more extensive after the three words is she was building herself up because why because the word says that praying in tongues praying in the spirit yourself you are building yourself up you're building up your faith you are literally breaking down those walls and barriers praying in tongues is one of the most you it literally can only be activated by faith the, there is other than you opening your mouth and having what Holy Spirit wants to come out. There is no other work that you can do for it to happen because he's not going to, like we said, he's not going to take over and do it for you. So it is only activated by faith. And it's not just, you know, a little bit of faith girl, Devin, she just gave me the next segue again. God love you. She said, yes, we build ourselves up on our most holy faith. And where does she get that truth from? She gets it from Jude 1 verses 18 through 21, which is the next verses. Yes. And she even put it on there, Jude 20. So if everyone could go to Jude 20. And just let me know when you're there. And I'll be reading verses 18 through 21. And I love how the subheading for this is keep yourselves in the love of God. So let me know when you guys are there and then I will read that. And I'll be reading that from the Amplified. Oh, and Kristen also shared it in the chat for anyone. All right. I have Janet there. Trisha's there. All right. And since, since Kristen put it up there as Taylor. well. Yep. Taylor. I, I I actually take it all the way. Did you say you're going to go to 23? Because I, I take it all the way to 23. 23. Um, okay. 23, 23. If you can take it all the way down, I put it up there for you too. Yeah, I can take it to 23. Okay, great. I'm just pulling up my Bible app on the side. <laughs> so yeah, not a problem. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. And like I said, this is Jude 1 verses 18 through 23 in the Amplified Version. They used to say to you, in the last days, there will be scoffers following after their own ungodly passions. These are the ones who are agitators, causing divisions, worldly minded, secular, unspiritual, carnal, merely sensual, unsaved, devoid of the spirit. But you, beloved, 
build yourselves up on the foundation of your most holy faith, continually progress, rise like an edifice higher and higher, pray in the Holy Spirit and keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously and looking forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, which will bring you to eternal life and have mercy on some who are doubting save others, snatching them out of the fire, and on some have mercy, but with fear, loathing even the clothing spotted and polluted by their shameless and moral freedom. So that's exactly what Devin was saying. It's our, it's literally the, the edifying is the holiest edifying you can receive. And that is from praying in the spirit. And Oh, Kristen shared the Passion Translation, so I will go ahead and read that as well. They taught you in the last days there will always be mockers motivated by their own ungodly desires. These people cause divisions and are followers of their own natural instincts, devoid of the life of the Spirit. But you, my delightfully loved friends, constantly and progressively build yourselves up on the foundation of your most holy faith by praying every moment in the spirit. Fasten your hearts to the love of God and receive the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gives us eternal life, keeping compassionate to those who still have doubts and snatch others out of the fire to save them. Be merciful over and over to them, but always couple your mercy with the fear of God. Be extremely careful to keep yourselves free from the pollutions of the flesh. Hallelujah. And then Kristen added the snatching them from the fire is us being operational within our realm and sphere, empowered by Christ and activated by Holy Spirit. Yes, exactly. And if you notice in this, in the passion translation that Kristen shared, it says, be merciful over and over to them, but always couple your mercy with the fear of God. Yes, we are to be merciful, but we are not to ever change the word of the Lord to, to pacify someone. The, the, the word does not change. The truth is the truth, no matter who you're speaking it to. We have mercy, love, and compassion, but not to the point where we try to pacify someone who's in sin we can love them by telling the truth in fact the word says that we are to tell people the truth in love but you cannot do one without the other because if you're not doing it in love then it's just like a noisy oh and Kristen's gonna add something real no, you could have finished that you could have finished that you could have finished that finish, finish what you gonna say well whatever you do if you do it without love it's just like a noisy it's just like a noisy gong and noisy symbol that is just clashing. It doesn't act. That person is not going to receive it. We have to make sure that we are doing things out of love. The moment we do something outside of love, it's not for God because God is love. Um, go ahead, Kristen. Thank you for that. And I was going to add in there that <clears throat> also it's important to take note that when it, it, it specifically says the fear of God, the opposite of that would be the fear of man. So it's important that we, in the time that we're not doing so, doing these things, that we're we're definitely putting those those things down, that fear of man, but also any form of enabling or just you know, well, let's just look on the bright side for the for the person's sake. Always just do it in truth, because otherwise you're gonna you can you'll begin to warp things. And that's when I call people like muddying the waters and the waters get muddied at that point. And it's like, well, I don't can't really trust anything that you're saying because either you say things because I'm either I'm you hurt. I'm crying because of what you gave me truth. Now I'm crying, but then you soften your approach. And well, well, you know, but it's not really this. No, I can't go back. Don't be moved by the impulses of the person. And how they're reacting. And it doesn't mean that you're giving truth in a harsh way, but sometimes truth, it hurts. And, you know, and or people become offended or defensive. But don't be moved by the impulses of the flesh, but rather the impulses of the Holy Spirit and what God's telling you to do. Um, very, very important. Thank you for that. Yes, amen, for sure. Um, 
<laughs> it's it's um it's it's so funny how God is just so good and all knowing. I mean, it just amazes me. I literally um I <laughs> I honestly was telling Kristen, me and her were talking earlier today. And we said, I'd rather have a correcting word from the Lord than something that's just a good quote unquote, feel good word. I, you know, when I want a real word, I want a true word from the Lord. And of course the Lord will give good news. I'm not saying he won't give you good news, but we have to remember, and you know what? Um, it's actually in scripture, Judges 6, 8, um, the Lord sent a prophet and he is actually known as the prophet, um, the unnamed prophet. Um, and he gives the Israelites uh, a word from the Lord. And this was not a happy word. They had turned away from God and they were sinning and they were idolizing the gods of Baal and all these other um, other gods from other cultures and this prophet and, it, and the scripture doesn't even give him a name. It just says that this prophet is a he that's, that's all I got from it. Um, and he gives a correcting word pointing out the disobedience from the Israelites. Um, and I even put in my own notes, you know, not all words are soft and cuddly because <laughs> they're not. And I love how he's an unnamed prophet because it just shows that he was exalting the Lord over himself. His name is not important. What, what's important is that you receive the word of the Lord and the truth first, even, you know, cause it is, it's, it's not, it's not until you, until you let the Lord crucify your flesh from that fear of man and trying to, you know, trying to worry about, well, how are they going to react if I tell them this truth? You got to let that go. You got, you, no, you don't even need to let that go. You need to let that get cut off because if you let man hold you back from speaking truth, then who are you exalting? You're exalting man's opinion and feelings over God's truth. And guess which one saves? Jesus saves. Jesus truth saves. And we want the real truth because Jesus is the real truth. He's not a false truth. And we, you, I, I, I've seen, and we've all seen with certain commercials recently this past year of a commercial trying to be quote unquote, loving and welcoming to everyone to where people can live their lives just the way they want to live. And Jesus will love them and accept them. Well, the truth is <laughs> repentance is necessary to even be baptized. You cannot be baptized in the Lord until you go through repentance. Why? Because why would someone who doesn't need a change think that they even need a savior? Jesus saves. And what is what does he save us from? Sin. So until you can realize what your sins are and repent of them, what is he what is he going to be saving those people from if they don't actually repent and change their ways? Nothing's changed. So it was just um I really <laughs> I honestly cuz it really is. It is not going to be when you're first getting started and the Lord tells you or Holy Spirit tells you, hey, you need to go tell this person that what they're doing is sinful. Um, you're going to do it out of love, but you're and you have to realize that any correction you're giving someone is out of love. It's because you love them so much. It's the same reason why Jesus died for us. It's because he loved us so much that he doesn't want sin to have access into our lives. He doesn't want the enemy to have access into our lives. Why? Because the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy John 10, 10 and Christ came to give life and life abundantly. But anytime you give the enemy legal access into your life, the way you get him back, the way to kick him out of your life is by repentance, which like Kristen puts in the chat, exactly. Repentance means to change your mind. It's when you have a complete renewal of mind and you're like, I hate what God hates. Why? Because he hates this because it's only going to bring destruction and death into my life. 
he loves us so much. He doesn't want us going through all that. And you need to have that same mindset when you're going to someone else whom you love and say, hey, I just want you to know I love you so much. Uh, what you're doing is allowing the enemy access into your life. Praise God. Thank you for Holy Spirit. Hey, pray in the spirit for a while before going to that person and he will give you witty ideas and inventions on how to bring this subject up and he will he will he will show you the way to do it he will give you the words in the hour you you know i feel like there's a lot of time when we put a pressure on ourselves and but jesus says his yoke is light he will he will tell you yes exactly and kristen just said it or he will tell you to be quiet and wait. He will give you the perfect timing. What did we say? What was the first scripture that he had us go over about praying in tongues? Romans 8, 26 through 27. He will give you the perfect prayer in the perfect timing, in perfect alignment with his perfect will. He will open. Yes, Kristen said he will open the door. Yes, he will. He will make a way. He, he, will, he, he has it. All he needs you to do is be operational and obedient and do what he says. But he's got the plan already. You just take the step he's telling you to take. So, you know, there's, you, there, you, and what does he say? He says, if you want wisdom, just ask. Just pray and ask for wisdom and he will give it to you. I mean, my goodness, how awesome is that? There's no test here. Just ask for it and I'll give it to you. You don't got to prove yourself. You know, I mean, it's so, it's so easy. And yet with our carnal human minds of feeling like we have to strive for everything, because that's what the world has told us and taught us from the very beginning. You know, we just, we just put so much pressure and weight on ourselves when we really don't have to, we, we, we just give it to him. Kristen said, and the yielding to the flesh will tell you it's hard and boring Man, I'll tell you what, I've been on way too many wild rides with Holy Spirit to think, yes, Margie said, ask, then believe you've received it. Yes, faith. You have to have faith. The faith is, Lord, I'm asking you for wisdom because I believe you're going to grant me wisdom because I've asked for it. Do I know that? Because I'm going to stand on his truth. That's what your word says. That's what you say. That's who you are. I'm standing on it. I'm standing on you. I'm standing with you and for you. So that's all there is to it. We got to cut our flesh. We got to cut that. We got to renew our minds. And it, literally, yes, Kristen said, there's no pleasing God without faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1. 1. We have to get ourselves to the point where God tells us to do something and we just do it. <laughs> We, instead of letting our minds come in and question it, I that was that Holy Spirit showed me that is the way to get rid of and defeat and to cut down being double minded. If I just do what he tells me to do. When okay, because I'm just going to do what he told me to do. And that was honestly. Oh, Trisha said she couldn't hear me. So I'll repeat that last part. That was how Holy Spirit taught me to cut down being double-minded was by just obeying what he says when he says it. Because if I just do what he tells me to do in that moment, then my mind, my carnal thinking, my flesh, it doesn't even have, a, it doesn't have the time or the chance to give a say about what's happening. You know, I don't need to, I, I don't need to know the whole plan. All I need to do is what he told me to do. And he will make sure that I know what I need to know on my end. And it takes faith to do that. And how do we, how do we build up our faith and edify ourselves by praying in the spirit, by praying in tongues, because he's going to pray and ask, you know, Papa God. For everything that we need to know, he's going to tear down walls that we don't even know is a wall yet. And then he'll show us later, like, yes, we this is something we need to work on. And I've already prayed about it. I mean, it's be, 
I, I'm very, it's very upsetting the amount of churches that I have been to where they don't speak on obedience at all because obedience is key. It is the absolute key to being operational and living this, this Christ faith walk. If you aren't obedient, it means that you don't believe in him in your heart, which means you aren't saved because those who are truly saved believe in the Lord with all their heart to the point where they obey his commandments. If you love me, obey my commandments. That's, that's scripture. Um, but yeah, I, <laughs> I could keep going down this road, <laughs> but we have things that we would like to pray for for fire friday oh and kristen added yes she added praying in the spirit is a discipline yes it is and the beautiful thing about it is that when you start doing it so much to it you you will start doing it and not even realizing that you're doing it like trisha said it becomes your first nature not second nature and that is i mean i've gone to bed many times just praying in the spirit within myself and just waking up and praying in the spirit still you know obviously my carnal mind was asleep but guess what our spirit doesn't sleep because god doesn't sleep so there's there's so many blessings to praying in the spirit um yes and chris and kristen just shared galatians 5 verses 22 through 23 amplified but the fruit of the spirit the result of his presence within us is love unselfish concern for others joy inner peace patience not the ability to wait but how we act while waiting kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control against such things there is no law self-control is a self-discipline and it is a fruit of the spirit So I definitely, um, there's, there's a lot more scripture (laughs) in the word about praying in tongues. Um, I do want to touch on one thing that there is a, well, what we will call a debate in the church about if praying in tongues is for everyone. And I just want to make this very, very clear. If, the Holy Spirit lives within you. Praying in tongues is for you because it is from him. And I have scripture to back that up. If you go to, and we were actually there before, but I didn't feel led to share on it at that moment. And this is why, because Holy Spirit brought us back around. If you go to 1 Corinthians 14 and go down to verse Five. We read verse four earlier, and I'm I'm going to read just the first sentence of verse five, and I'll explain why. And it says, this is first Corinthians. Chapter 14, verse five amplified. Now, I wish that all of you spoke in unknown tongues, but even more, I wish that you would prophesy. And this scripture has been taken out of context so many times in the debate about who or who can't speak in tongues. And I want to point out to you, the word that Paul uses in this when he's speaking to the church is he says, now I wish that all of you spoke in unknown tongues. That word all means everyone he is speaking to. Now, Why would he sit there and say, I wish that all of you spoke in unknown tongues, but even more, I wish that you would prophesy because they are all capable of speaking in tongues, whether or not they do it is up is between them and their faith and them doing it with Holy Spirit, but all of them are capable of doing it. And when you go to Acts, when they are all baptized by the fire of Holy Spirit. It says that every one of them who was there, all of them were baptized in the fire of the spirit and began speaking in an unknown tongue. So everyone who was baptized in Holy Spirit 
and Holy Spirit lives within them. And like the scriptures have shown in the spirit in Ephesians 6, 16 through 18, that spirit is Holy Spirit and us teaming up with Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. So it is for everyone who has Holy Spirit dwelling within them. It is not just for some and not others. It is it, it is for everyone. So if that's a lie, the enemy is trying to tell you that you're just not someone who has that gift. That is, that's not true. That's not true at all. The word all in the Strong's that is used from Paul in that verse literally means all of every kind, meaning everyone he was speaking to. It wasn't just, oh, well, you know, you are, a, you're a teacher and you're a prophet and you're this, this, and this. So only these people can speak in tongues. No, it was for everyone, everyone, all. And that includes you, all. So if that's a, I, I just pray that whoever hears that has the ears to hear and you just cut down that lie from the enemy with him trying to tell you that you are not in, in that all you are, you are a part of the all you are a part of the all. And the reason why the enemy doesn't want you to operate in praying in tongues is exactly what we taught on when it came to being a part of the armor of God, because it is a weapon and it is a, it's a form of protection. And of course the enemy doesn't want you to have those available. So I just, I just pray that whoever that word was for, that you receive it, that it's received on good soil and that it is planted and rooted and that there will be fruit, spiritual fruit that comes from that and that you will receive and allow yourself you've already received it i'm going to say instead of receive i'm going to say that you will operate in the gift of praying in tongues because you have it all right um kristen did you want to go over the things that we want to pray for or do you want us to pray in tongues first for a little bit or do you want to, me to read the thing that we're going to pray for and then pray for tongues for that specific thing and then move on to the next how would you like to go about this um actually it i think it would be best if if we would just uh read what we want what we're what we're uh praying in the spirit for and just pray in the spirit so if we would just okay. read, we can just read, read the, the list. list yep and then then we can just go and pray in the spirit and let holy spirit just do whatever he wants cool <laughs> hi axel all right that sounds awesome okay so we will be praying for the tornadoes that hit ohio tennessee west virginia indiana kentucky um and any other states that i missed that happened a few days ago we will be praying for the flooding from the storms we will be praying uh, we will be praying about the earthquakes that happened in new jersey new york and taiwan we'll be praying about the eclipse that's going to be this coming up monday april 8th we'll be praying about um ohio which um the lord told Kristen that ohio is the sleeping giant We'll be praying about the Fire Nest family, just protection over all of us and all of our viewers and their family members during the times that we're coming in. We'll be praying for the underground church in Asia. We'll be praying for eyewitnesses and whistleblowers. And then we will be praying about um, CERN. Uh, Kristen, can you explain what CERN is a little deeper? I think you have more understanding on that than I do. Yes, one second, I'm sorry. Actually, my mom has a very extensive uh, understanding. Oh, Axel. Yes, but you dropped all the bread on the floor. That's why I'm trying to put it on. <laughs> on uh, our mute because he had some sack of bread for no reason. But um, <laughs> my mom a, um, an extensive understanding of CERN, but 
basically what they're supposedly what they've been trying to do for some time is <clears throat> they have like this uh like a particle <laughs> it sounds crazy but it's a, but you know it's the thing that you, it's a movie where they're able to particle separator in a sense they're basically trying to split the fabric of the natural realm to reveal the spirit realm. Mom, did you want to tell us what you want to tell us? Go ahead. I was just saying it's a collider. Yeah. yeah. Go, go, go on there, teacher. <laughs> but yes, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get into the spiritual realm to unlock. They say they're trying to find the God particle, but or what created the universe or whatever. But they're trying to open up the realm of the demonic is actually what they're doing and bring the demonic spirits to this realm because this whole Hadron Collider thing they have partially gotten it open and they did observe these demonic type creatures on the other side but they, they weren't able to get it completely open so that's why we need to pray against this thing that this will um, not happen, not open. Um, that's why they aiming it at this what the demon comet. All of it is is demonic. It's all of the um of the enemy to bring yeah. chaos and destruction to the world. I'm trying to bring the, everybody into the um under their control. So yes, this needs to be a stop. Yes, and they and part of the their idea. Um, hold on, I'm sorry. The Lord told me to say something. I totally forgot. Now I'm about to say it. Um, <clears throat> the thing that the Lord was saying is we have to understand that that there were watchers upon this earth that fell. <clears throat> there were watchers upon this earth that have, have fell. You have the they're the ones who who laid with. The women and married the women and created the giants. Those are the watcher angels. Okay, they don't roam free on the earth, so they're not <laughs> they're not roaming free on the earth. But these these they're not just like demons. These are these are, we're not talking about demons. We're talking about a completely different level of demonic evil forces. Okay, so they're. They're trying to pull out the big guns is what they're trying to do. They want to take their will as people because people we have dominion, we, you know, us having a dominion on the earth, they want to use their will, their, their will and attach it to these demonic entities to force the change of times and season and control. They want to they think that they can gain control over the entire earth. So they're, yeah, they're taking scripture and, and they're warping it. So they're like, well, if, if the Lord, if Jesus won back the earth for man and get in, and, and that's brought back, well, you know, they're saying, okay, well, we're man and we can then take this. And cause they believe the Bible. There's no, they don't think that it's not real. They believe the Bible. They're just trying to manipulate it for power, gain, control, et cetera, et cetera. And so they also, I, they also in some way believe that they're going to um, like inherit the the universe or the cosmos. They're going to inherit everything. They're going to become living forever, forever living beings. They're going to, you know, and they're going to make themselves gods and goddesses. So they are the Nimrod. Mm -hmm. yes exactly so this is what they're this is what they're trying to do and now and the thing one of the things the lord told me about the other day was um the reason why they're trying to do all this during a solar eclipse like what like why just like why why would they wait until this point well for the same reasons why you had the um you have the uh, what do they call the Holy Spirit? The Greeks and and them talking about the about the cosmos, about the stars and and all these the the these uh, constellations and lining up of certain things. 
there are there's God uses the seasons and time, so it's just a perver it's a reversing or a warping of what God's doing. He'll use the seasons and times, um, uh, for to 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 for His will and His purposes. There, are, there's, if I can even say it in this what this way, there's there's more supernatural spiritual activity going on during those times. God says He uses the times and the seasons. And he uses the, and he uses the, 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 help me, Holy Spirit. He uses the planets and the stars, the heavens, thank you, Holy Spirit, the heavens to showcase what's happening. So, and what's, what, what's coming about. So the, the presence of more supernatural activity going on. So basically they're going, they're trying to use that same because remember we talked about the spirit realm is not just for the godly, you know, it, it's all the enemy uses it as well. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to use that same power, just like they try and they, they believe they get power from the moon on full moons and all this stuff. It's the same thing. <clears throat> that And this is why they like to go into nature and do all this but like Wicca and all that, why they do this stuff and why they feel like they have power because they're tapping into spiritual realms and spiritual flows that they don't understand fully. Some people, a lot of people who are starting it out, they don't understand, but they are feeling power. It's because they're tapping into and going into the, the, the powers in the spirit realm. Um, and, but this is dangerous. This is, and it's demonic to be trying to get into the spirit realm without God. But so anyway, just to bring it back to a, a level that I think everybody will be able to understand and grasp is just that they're trying, they're seeking to use the power of the time and, and to change things and to bring about these demonic entities that they have been trying for some time now to try and bring these demonic entities out. And, and, and actually, thank you, Holy Spirit. You, I wish I had got this on my computer because he just told me something. He said, uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. The Lord said, you've seen it before. He said, you've seen it before. Only you didn't recognize it. If you've seen the Avengers, if you've seen the Avengers where they open up the spirit realm in New York City, and let these demonic things in, and it took Loki to do it. And you know, of course, and if you if you if you follow this the Marvel at all, you'll know that Loki and Thor are supposed to be demigods. And so you have well, one of them, uh, Thor is supposed to be the demigod, and then Loki is supposed to be the um. Uh, if I can, if I can show you the parallel, hold on, Mike. Alarm is going up one second. Okay. Um, if you, if I can parallel it for a moment, Thor would be Thor and his father, which is who is called the All Father. The All Father is supposed to parallel who Father God is. Thor is supposed to parallel who Jesus is. And then Loki is supposed to parallel who Satan is. And this also follows in close alignment with the Mormon Bible. Okay. Now in the, in the movie, this is just, that's in, that's in their um, Greek theology or whatever, but in the movie in particular, uh, Thor is partnered with the humans. Okay. To, uh, to bring about victory, et cetera, et cetera. Well, Loki being the deceiver who he is, he's an absolute deceiver. And he's pure hateful in the movie. Um, he'd kill you with a smile. So he, he's the one that uses, I believe they use the Tesseract to open up the, they use the Tesseract to open up this portal. The Tesseract is basically what you would say is CERN. It shoots a beam up into the sky and it rips open the fabric. And he already had a team, a, a, a legion of um demons basically not even demons but hordes of demonic beings already ready and they flooded through new york there's a reason why they use new york 
there's a reason why all this stuff, these things were massive in size and in and, and, and proportion to buildings even. They were beyond massive. And so, and they brought them down in there and, and into the world to, to try and take over. They wanted to take over the earth and they wanted to subdue man. And Loki wanted to become the God of the earth, okay? That was his, that's his whole, his whole thing, okay? His whole thing. And then, and through the whole, just a side note, through the whole relationship between Loki and Thor, Thor just forgives Loki and loves him no matter what he does. This, again, this is, these are just, this, again, just so demonic. Um, so we have, so the Lord saying, you've seen it. So they, they've already showed you. This is why I wish I had my, um, well, Holy Spirit said I can still do it. <sighs> Let me see. Yeah, this is it. And I'll, and I'll show you when it, when it opens up, you'll see it looks just like the CERN thing that I'm telling you about. Uh, uh mirror screen. Mm, yes. Okay. You just let me know if you can see this. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, so this scene is called Portal Opens, okay? Even even what it's called, Portal Opens, Battle Begins. Do you see that? And look at the year that it aired, 2012. Do I need to tell you? That the that 2024 is what? <laughs> it's no coincidence. It's no coincidence. That 12, 12 and 12. Whew, 12 and 12 make 24. That's your government, okay? That was 12 years ago that they that they did this. So that they came out and um have this now let me show oops i'm sorry i just got out of it i think okay now let me show you let me let me turn up my volume okay just let me know if there's any issues just unmute yourself because i can't really see anything but this is what happens this is the this is the little they use the tesseract to to power this machine and you see it shoots it into this into the door and it splits the fabric and there are the words of the monarchy of the waiting. This waiting for the deal to the deal that was or I'll destroy it. You can't. There is no stopping it. There is only the war. So be it. Stark, we're on your three headed northeast. What, did you stop for drive through Swing up park. I'm going to lay him out for you. Fine. 
Let's keep them occupied. And it, that was just showing one, but there ends up being so, so many uh, we <laughs> uh, the spirit of war. Yeah, the spirit of war. Exactly. So this, so this is what this is what they're trying to do. Okay. This is what they're trying to do. This is what their hopes are for Monday. This is what their hopes are for Monday. We don't have a tesseract, but they're using in, in the essence of the power of something. So they're trying to say, okay, then it's, it's some supernatural power. Actually, I don't have time to go all the way through the tesseract, but um, and what exactly it is, but. It's a supernatural power that they get within that they get within uh within realms that is supposed to be like protected, etc. They get it and then they abuse the power of it. And that that is also the combining of the 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 will of man with the with the plans of the enemy. So this is what <laughs> you want to know, but the Loki die? Is that what you're asking? Okay, but Loki did, is what she said. Their government, their government tried to weaponize it. Yes, their government tried to weaponize the. Yes, exactly. And actually, we were just talking about me and so me and Taylor were just talking about something. I think it was yesterday. Um, I called her on the phone and I was telling her about. The dream I had in particular a long while ago, um, a very long while ago, but I've mentioned it before. And it was a dream where I saw every type of flight, like aircraft in the sky. Like it was every type of aircraft I could think of. And I could see the flight patterns of where it was going, where it was heading. And when I said every type of aircraft, I also saw what looked like what we what we would call flying saucers. Okay. No, there's no aliens. But I literally saw that in the sky. And and like I, I told Taylor, in the dream that I had, when I saw when I saw all those things, um, yeah, I was like, uh, what what? Am I just shocked with what could possibly be happening? What could possibly be and they were all headed, you know, in some particular direction, but one of the things I told her was that I I know for a fact no there are no aliens there's no like some out life force you know like on another planet but no these are demonic entities and I and I told her that when I was in high I've, I've actually seen seen it myself twice I saw it one time when I was in high school I was walking to school and I just had a very strange feeling of, about me I felt like somebody was watching me and it actually made me feel freaked out. And I was walking and it was, you know, it was so early in the morning. I'm like looking around. It's still a little dark, but it's the sun's coming up. I'm like looking around 
And, you know, I'm like, okay, I don't really see anything, but I still feel this feeling and it's kind of intense. And as I looked over my, over the left of where I was, I saw a flying saucer. I just like a fly. It just, it's the, unfortunately the only UFO, whatever I want to call it, but it was that circular with that rim kind of looked like Saturn, you know, and it was over a house and it was, it was kind of far off of the distance. But the moment I saw it, it zipped around, like it almost like it knew I looked at it and it zipped around and zoomed and was gone. I was absolutely terrified. I ran all the way to school and I was not close. And when I got there, I was so scared. I told, I told a friend of mine at the time, his name was Shane. I, and he since has passed away, but I told him and he actually thought that was hilarious. He thought I was just making it up. I was lying. I was, I was shaking. I was so scared. I'm like, look, I've seen enough unsolved mysteries in my life to never want to see, you know, and he's like, you're just being silly. You're just, you're just being, you're just trying to fool me. Well, and I obviously I wasn't. Well, the next day he encountered one and he ran to school and he was beyond petrified. And he was like, I believe you. I believe you. Oh, I'm scared. I'm, I'm, what does it mean? Why is it that? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't. And then I, then I was really scared. because I'm like, we go for never seeing one. And then and now I see one. And then the next day you see one. Now I'm just terrified of an invasion. I was worried. And of course, it had been years later that we, I saw another one. That time when we, I was with Josh, and we, it was in the very early morning. I think it was probably three o'clock in the morning, and we were delivering newspapers. So we're, no one's out on the road but us, and we're driving through neighborhoods, dropping papers into, and everything. And it's, it was so huge; it was larger than two homes. I mean, they were massive the way it was in the sky, but it went straight over us. And, and it what looked like it landed behind these homes, which would have been impossible because uh, the, the way the homes, their backyards, they didn't have a whole lot of a backyard. It would have to tear everything up, but it didn't because it was spiritual. And when it, but I didn't know that then. I didn't know a lot of stuff. And it, and it landed. I was like, forget that. I'm not delivering any of their papers. I was scared. I'm like, did you just see that? It was like, it was huge. It was, it was, I'm like telling him, I'm like freaking out. Like, look. I'm like, I'm scared. I don't want to even deliver those. And he was like, we have to, or, you know, that'd be the entire paycheck. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I mean, you're right. Cause the miss fees were ridiculous, but I'm saying this to say, even as we move forward, if we begin to see more, and I do believe we will see more, I will, I believe that people will see them more and more. These are not, these are not aliens. They're not some higher power. They don't have some you know, they're not us in the future who, who you know, tell, come to warn us about this and that and the other. They're not any of those things. These are, it's demonic. These are demonic entities that have been giving power to roam the earth. And um, the government is like teaming, is teaming up with, with these, these demonic spirits. So I just let us all know, let us all be aware now and not later thinking that, you know, oh, you know, how come nobody told me? Well, you know, we're telling you now. Let's be aware now. You can bring him to me, Lily. Let's be aware now about what's what's going on and and be and be on our guard to pray. But so that those Holy Spirit, is there anything else I'm missing? I just want to make sure that I've said everything. That I've said everything. Okay, the Lord said they put in the in the movie they put the tesseract a portion of the tesseract tesseract in that collider so i don't know you know they do all kinds of things where they experiment with people and and all kinds of i mean it's 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 twisted the things hi baby the twist twist of the things that they do to try and gain power and obviously they've experimented on people and things for so long there for so long i mean obviously they did with um you know how they got giants and how they did all these things they experimented with people for a very long time this is not new and this is why we can you know i think a portion of it why we continue to see that time is laying upon itself because what what was we're going to see you know again and trying to but be but uh, albeit not maybe not obviously the same as it was before because we have different technology and things but that they're trying to to open things up to bring about their rule upon this earth now 
Now, now we understand what, what we're praying against. We're coming into agreement with. Now, if I were to say, now go ahead and pray, you would have no clue what to pray except the very first thing that comes to your mind and what you don't want to have happen. But that's not enough. We need eyes and ears and wisdom and knowledge deeper than anything that we know or understand. And this is exactly why we're going to Holy Spirit and why we're letting Holy Spirit pray through us because we do not know all what to pray. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We just don't. And uh, and also, I think it's important that um, I think it's important that we also need to acknowledge the fact that God's going to do what He's already set up to do as long as we we get in alignment with Him. And if that means, if by any means that CERN is successful, that means they they got nothing on our God. And and we have to also understand and know that God already knew that this was going to happen and their fall will be great. And this is in however he sets them up. And so many times the Lord has spoken so many words how, about how the enemy has walked into his trap. So let's do not become discouraged based off of any information that you may or may not hear. I don't know. He hasn't told me that information. He actually didn't even tell me anything about um, the adventures until just now. Um, so, so, so it's very important. It's very important. You know, it's important that we pray in the spirit. It's important that we continue to pray in the spirit and, and yield our, our will and our, our devotion to the Lord. Because in, I mean, and we've already read so many scriptures, but it, part of those scriptures are saying, um, that. Okay, hold on. Holy Spirit is sending something to me. So let me just see what he's trying to say. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, the Lord, Jesus, the Lord just said, you know, to he said, fear not, little ones. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. And don't look at the storm. <laughs> Do not look at the storm as if I'm just watching him do something. You don't, don't look at the storm as if he, he cannot. Uh, he's saying too many things at one time. Holy Spirit, I just thank you. for. I want to say them all. So let me just, let me start with the first thing he said. Do not, do not look at the storm. And be afraid as if he cannot stop the storm. And he said, but do not be afraid. Do not look at the storm and be afraid as if God has is not create created the weather. Um, God created weather. Regardless of the enemy tries to manipulate it. And so he's using it as a parallel. Regardless of the enemy, enemy tries to manipulate it for his will. I mean, we saw what we saw what happened where they were calling those. They were calling for like the worst we've ever seen. It's going to tear tear everything up. It's going to do this and that. But God already spoke a word and gave out that word and, and gave me that dream years ago about um, the lion in the sky and that it, and that when it reached where we were, it was going to be like a kitten, the kitten's paw, just where it wasn't going to be some huge lion. God was going to nullify. He was going to keep us safe. So we, so so in the same way, no matter what, you know, something might look like, we, we need to, we just, our, our hope ultimately is in him and he is going to keep us in perfect peace and keep us safe. We have to keep our minds fixed on him. And how can we do that? One is by praying in the spirit. So unless Taylor, you have anything additional and Lord, if you had anything that you want me to say also, I would like us just to begin praying in the spirit together. Hallelujah, Lord. Okay, T uh, sorry, Trisha said, so when these alien beings have taken people and tortured them, those were like physically manifested? Yeah, so, yeah, they, and they're not, they're not, yes, absolutely, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Because in the same way, if I, we have to understand this, if I walk around the store and I, there's an angel manifested right beside me and can talk to me and I could touch this angel and he could touch me back. Same way, you know, the, the enemy it can, is, can also, that's why it's, it, it, <laughs> That's why we have to be careful. We, you know, who we entertain. But yes, they can take on forms, shape shifts, all of that stuff. You just, it's, it's, they can. That's why we, just why you need to just be, you know, we have to all just be, um, not number one, not be naive, but also we have to be yielded to the spirit of God and and, and know what's right from wrong. And I thank you, Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit literally just yes, Taylor. Holy Spirit literally just said in the same way because mom just showed just shared earthquake Kelly's uh, testimony where his father was a warlock who was pretending to be like a Baptist preacher. How many people were like, amen, pastor, amen, pastor. Oh, I felt something on that. Oh, that, I felt the spirit of God on that. Oh, I, that felt something manifested in my body. Oh, it gave me chills. Oh, I felt heat. How many people felt something, amen, and everything else and became demon possessed? Because it's not about your outward feelings. It's literally about Holy Spirit discernment. It doesn't matter if they preach an on-fire message. The devil can preach an on-fire message too. It doesn't matter what the words or whatever. Remember, I continuously say it's the spirit behind it. It's really important that you know the spirit behind it. It doesn't matter how, wow, it was great, or wow, it was this, or whatever. They spoke with such conviction, et cetera, et cetera. The devil speaks with a lot of conviction, too. That's how a lot of people get caught up with him. He doesn't come out with 10 million horns and, you know, and seething and looking scary. You know, it, what is, I can't remember his name. Rodriguez, I believe his last name was Rodriguez. He used to be a warlock, but he said that the devil wore the most expensive looking like Milani suit. He looked like a businessman. He looked like a million trillion bucks. And Satan. And and he would and he would commune with Satan. So don't 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 underestimate or think, well, you know, he only gonna be like this, or he only, only gonna be like that. It's this just not it. Um but I'm not a Satan minded person. Um, I, I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I'm not. Um, but I think it's also important that you understand and know that information. Yeah. Cause he, he composes the angel light. That's why literally God, the word of God says, don't, don't even marvel. Don't be like, you know, Oh, wow. Discern, 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 stop marveling, discern recognize understand and know don't be like oh wow you know this has you know 1.5 million views it must be great you don't know that you better just discern because if you're not careful what you entertain will detain and enter you john ramirez thank you that's his name john ramirez so and saying i'm sorry i didn't know it just and unfortunately it just doesn't cut it the devil's not going to be like oh he, he didn't know he doesn't care that you don't know it's actually our own fault that we're ignorant because the Bible says my people perish for a lack of knowledge or the lack of knowing him. So, so let us know our God this day. He is our God. He is, <laughs> he is everything. The devil's not greater than him. No being that was created, on, created and put on this earth is greater than him. No plot or plan or purpose of the enemy is greater than his. And God's going to have his time upon this earth. And this is the move of God right now, regardless of what it looks like or whatever. How many times the Lord said when the, when, when the, when the yoke is broken, that the oxen will be stirred. He told us that for a reason, just like when people didn't understand when Trump didn't make it in, you know, by the books or whatever, how they showed it. But we know full well what the Lord said, because that does, that doesn't matter. His plan does not unfold the way we think it is, and I and I sometimes we we think that well, why shouldn't it? Well, he didn't come the way they thought he was going to come, neither. They didn't even want to receive him because they felt like this isn't the one we've been waiting for. 
even John the Baptist had his peeps come over and be like, hey, yo, Jesus, uh, are you the one we was waiting on, though? For real, though? Just like, would you just let us know real quick? <laughs> just, just slide in my DMs real quick and just let me know. And what did Jesus say? He didn't say, yes, I am. Well, yes, I am. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. No, he was like, what have you seen? <laughs> what have I been doing? He just came back and was like, observe. What does that mean? It means discern. <laughs> discern. Discern. That's why he was like, how come you don't understand what I done told you already? And they're like, well, I'm not really sure, but what were you saying when you said that? And he was like, are you still trying to chew on that? You know, why is it that you don't grasp? Because you don't discern. That's why you always got wicked and perverse generation. You won't get a sign. Teacher, rabbi, give us a sign that shows us how we might believe in you. And he was like, you wicked folk. You ain't get nothing. But yet you can discern the season and the time. Did he say that? If the sky was like this or like that, you would say it's going to be this or that. Didn't he tell him that? Because you discern natural things, but you're ignorant to spiritual things. And that's in that what he labeled them the wicked and perverse. We are to discern. We are spirit beings first. We are to discern. That's one of the things that the new age and the, uh, what is the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Thank you, the Wiccans on, where they get an edge up on, uh, you know, in, in one area, that would be understanding spiritual matters versus the church. Un unfortunately for them, we will always win because greater is he who is in us than he that is of this world or is in this world. God is always superior and greater in every way, but we didn't have to spend time being defeated in certain things and f um, finding ourselves running back, falling back, going back to the drawing board, etc. If we would learn to discern and wait upon the Lord, Lord and hear and pray like it says without ceasing, you know, we again perish for the lack of knowledge, the lack of understanding, and honestly, just lack of putting it into practice. So, there's, there's no fear in this message, just truth and, and insight, revelatory knowledge, and honestly, our faith, which is going to put the devil on the run. Our faith, praying in the spirit, which is our most holy faith. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. 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 And actually, the Lord said one of the reasons that Devin's here tonight is that she's going to release freedom over the nation and over 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 the nation, over the plan of the enemy, because the enemy's plan is to to still kill and destroy. And put a and 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 put an uh, what did you say, Holy Spirit, and put a yoke of death upon the nations. But God, the Lord God says, nay. I say, nay, you shall not, you shall not gather my cattle, nor shall you drive them, says the spirit of the Lord. But I have turned you out of the garden and you shall not pillage and plunder any further, says the Lord. For my trumpet has gone forth and the blast has been heard and freedom shall ring from sea to shining sea and coast to coast will begin to sing of the freedom that I, the Lord thy God, have given my people once again. Yes, I have said, liberty shall go forth and it shall ring. I heard you, Holy Spirit. And it shall ring and it shall ring and it shall ring. Make not the mistake of misunderstanding that freedom and liberty comes from me first, says the Lord. Hallelujah. There was recently, I have to touch this really quick. There was recently a word that was given that was counter to even what the Lord just said about the word about liberty being an idol. But the Lord God said that the reason what he what he told me just then was there has been false narratives that have been that have been breathed through the spirit realm. And some have picked up on it because they have not discerned. And they have spoken false narratives. But freedom and liberty and justice comes from God first. Those things are birthed from within him. It's not an idol. It is, it is sonship. It is what we, we are heirs to. 
So the, I just had to say that, but, but, but praise his name, Lord, we just thank you. And we get in alignment with, with what you say, because the Lord says, if you, if you unhook yourself, oh my gosh, why on earth would you want to unhook yourself, yourself from freedom and liberty, which is who God, this is God, not a person or, or a statue. This is literally what God has been saying since the beginning. Is this not the same words that he spoke to Egypt? or to the Israel's, Israelites in Egypt for freedom and liberty is, I mean, come on. This is literally, is it also not the very, I heard the Lord, he said, is it also not the very first word that I prophesied over my two people? When they, when Adam and Eve were cursed and God, what was the thing he told them that he was going to bring about freedom and liberty and justice to the enemy? Those are like first three things he said, but see the false narrative is being breathed out and people are catching it in the spirit and it's hitting them in the spirit. And they're like, oh my goodness, instead of taking that word to Lord, they begin to chew on it and ponder it and they begin to speak it out and people are going to unhook themselves from freedom and from liberty and 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 the, and, and be out of line with God. But see, that's a plan of the enemy that I just come in right now to fall. Fall, I just speak exposure and I say revelation comes to those who have taken the false narrative and that Lord, that they would be able to turn around, repent and bring about your words of freedom and restoration and liberty and justice for every person who calls on you. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you. And if we can have a, a, a minute, if we can have, who had his fire on me, if we can have Devin release freedom and then Taylor, if you want to lead us um, and we'll go. Oh, the Lord's timing is so good because I literally just finished cooking dinner. <laughs> oh, Heavenly Father, we just release your freedom. We release our, your freedom over our homes, over every person in the fire nest. We release it over every single state and we release it over the nation and the world, Father. Your freedom, there is nothing better than your freedom and the freedom that you purchased for us, Jesus. And so we just take this moment right now and we just release, release, release your freedom to just come against every evil act of the enemy that is trying to come against us these days. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm sorry, Taylor. I'm so sorry. I was gonna type it, but when you were when you began to speak in the spirit, I saw these angels going forth. And you know, in the in like a, a marching band when they have that big old drum on their on their chest and it has those straps that holds the drum and they can beat it from side to side. I saw angels that were strapped with what looked like our Liberty bell that's cracked. I don't know if it was cracked or not, but they, it was like, it looked identical in shape and in color and, and size, but it was massive and they were massive and they were ringing and they were hitting it. Boom, boom, boom. And they were going, going forth. I don't know where they were going, but I just see them going forward and they're, and they were hitting it. So praise God, Lord, I thank you, hallelujah, that liberty is being rang out across the nations, just as he said it was going to be from, from sea to sea and coast to coast. We thank you, Lord, hallelujah. And um, thank you, Taylor, please go ahead. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, if everyone could just come together and we are going to just pray over everything that was spoken about. Um, tonight, the things that were on this list, but also um, for those who've listened to this and, you know, who aren't operating in the spirit yet where they're praying in tongues um, for we're going to over that literally over everything that's been spoken of tonight. Um, so if you guys can unmute yourselves and just join me, we're going to pray in the spirit and Holy Spirit is just going to pray that perfect prayer. Um, in his perfect timing, that's in perfect alignment with the Lord's will. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> 
One of the things I saw in the spirit was a wrestling. There was a wrestling, but um, it was there were no. I couldn't see faces, but it, it honestly looked like two cloud formations, two cloud formations, and one was pitch black, and the other was was white. There were clouds, but I could see two fists. So fi two fists from the white cloud two fists from the black cloud and they were going head to head. It was like, almost like, um, if you can think of how Superman flies with both fists out forward, it was like that thing. And they rammed into each other. And immediately I saw what the, uh, the dark cloud had grabbed the wrists of the white cloud. And it looked like for a moment, I'm like, excuse me, you know, but while they, while he had the, the wrist grabbed the white cloud and be end up like just pump. it was like it honestly looked like and I heard oh. you Holy Spirit thank you it looked like the black cloud was making the white cloud punch him in the face and I was just like what in the world am I looking at well the Lord said because <laughs> 
everything that the enemy tries to do is going to backfire on themselves. It is going to backfire. It is going to backfire. It's going to blow up in their own faces. Faces, the things that they put their hands to, it's going to be things that's like they're sealing their own fate. They're going to begin to say things. They're going to begin to do things. They're going to begin, they're going to mess up. It's going to be things happening. It's going to be exposure. The mm -hmm. Lord specifically had given a word the other day in regards to the skirts being uh, flipped up. He was going to he was going to raise the skirt up. He's going to make them fall flat on their face and then raise their skirt up and then hold it there. He okay. said, until they are fully exposed, until they're thoroughly exposed, he's not going to let, let up. And I, and I'm just, I thank thank you, Lord. I thank you for all that you're doing. I thank you, Lord, okay. oh, for speaking to your people. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us the opportunity to partner with you. I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that the host of heaven have gone forward. And that, hallelujah. Yes, I thank Thank you, Jesus, the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. He said, I was going to, I was going to say, um, and that Monday would be, you know, a, uh, a, a a good day and he said it's, it's a good day and a day for celebration so i just thank you is what he said a good day and a day for celebration hallelujah the lord god says so look up look up at the stars in the sky look up towards my heaven says the lord for i am the one who has placed it there i am also the one who's caused the eclipse do not mince the words the enemy cannot and has no power over the things that I have set in the sky. Though he may try to tap into my power, I say access denied, but he shall see that I really do keep my word to the very, very end. Hallelujah, Lord, we just thank you. We just thank you. We just thank you. We just thank you, Lord. We just thank you. I just hear the Lord say, so celebrate. And he's like yelling it. So celebrate. Hallelujah. Lord, we just celebrate. Lord, I'm going to make a cake. I just thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I'm going to make cookies instead. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to celebrate. Hallelujah. Yes, Yes, Lord. The Lord said when, when the eclipse was seen, <clears throat> when the eclipse was seen, hold on. Thank you, Lord, for preserving my throat. When the eclipse was seen in Nineveh, they knew that something, it was some form of judgment coming, which is why when Jonah showed up, which was obviously not something that they were, does, 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 doesn't happen because they were in so much blatant sin. When Jonah showed up, why there was such a dramatic response, including from the king. He didn't, you know, he didn't even want to go. <laughs> it wasn't like he, oh my goodness, hallelujah. Because they under, they knew something's happening. Something, there's not, something's not right. And then they got that word. They were like, oh my goodness, he's right. We are, we've seen the eclipse. It was like the, um, it's the sign. It's the sign that the people in the Bible, that the, that the Pharisees and the Sadducees wanted, they wanted to see a sign or a wonder they they wanted to see that but you know the lord still gave him that sign and the, and it, the sign was also the eclipse even though he said it was the was going to be jonah he said the sign was jonah where you know jonah was in the belly of the whale you know it was in the belly of the sea creature you know <laughs> he said and so will the son of man be in the belly for the three days right well in the same way the eclipse also something that happened in the for the time right before uh, you know for jonah and then the eclipse there was an eclipse when jesus was on was <laughs> when he was crucified because it says that the sun became black in the middle of the day and it was prophesied even before that so hallelujah look so we just thank you we are going to <clears throat> we are going to celebrate we are going to sing praises we're going to rejoice hallelujah because this is the sign that <clears throat> That it's everything is turned, hallelujah. That the things have turned, the tide has turned, that the winds of change are, have blown. 
And we thank you, Lord, that this is the time. Hallelujah. This is the time. This is the time. Well, yes, Lord, I just decree that this, this is, this is the, um, how do you say that? This is the, yes, Lord, thank you. You know, Lord, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord said in the same way that you would celebrate and have a baby shower before you have the baby in the same way, rejoice for the, <laughs> in the same way, rejoice and have the baby shower before the baby. And the reason why he even mentioned that was because I was going to say, this is that pushing where the shoulders, the shoulders coming forth out of, out, out of the womb, you know, the shoulders is the, is the, is the hardest part that's got to come out because the widest part. So he's just, but he's like, once that, once this push comes through, come on, hold on, and the Lord also said, <clears throat> sorry, my throat, <clears throat> but he also, he's also saying, <laughs> he said when a baby is born there is bloodshed hallelujah <laughs> he said and going in the pass over the blood that was shed, thinking not strength, says the Spirit of the Lord. You are right in marveling how, how great and how smart I am. Because wisdom flows from me, says the Spirit of the Lord. We're not plotting and planning now. We have already laid out everything. It is written in my floor. It is written on my floor. Shall anyone come and ascend into heaven to change my very floor? Says the Lord. Because I was wrong, ha, 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 says the Spirit of the Lord, I am never wrong. But it is already written, and it shall be done. In the words of your father, Kristen, so let it be written, so let it be done. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. My father would say that all the time. It was his favorite line from, thank you, Holy Spirit, from the Ten Commandments. So let it be written. So let it be done. Hallelujah. I just see heaven. I see heaven. I see the throne room. Hallelujah. And I see all the people who were there. They're on their face. And I see in the floor, the, 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 and I can't really understand, but what the image is on the floor. But I know it's a, it's just like I don't know, but what I do, what I call like a calendar, but it's not a calendar. Hallelujah! It's 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 circular. It's massive. But they're all on their faces. Hallelujah, Lord, and the Lord standing in the center. Hallelujah, 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 Lord. Worthy are you, Jesus. Worthy are you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord says you don't have to hold your breath with him. He already knows the end. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He said we win, and it's not <laughs> it is not a raggedy we win. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be where we're so beaten up and tore up and just barely made it to the end. No. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord says, is that really how I do things? Just ask Gideon and his army. Hallelujah, Lord. Ask Elijah. <laughs> and his one. Like it's, it's like it's just his self. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Whoo. Hallelujah. Taylor said, <clears throat> an eclipse can only happen with a new moon. <laughs> yeah, on the 8th, yes. Hallelujah. The 8th, the new beginnings. Hallelujah. Mom said, yes, hallelujah. And Taylor said, he's birthing something new. Yes, he is. Mom said, he's birthing freedom that we never experienced before. Exactly. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah lord i just release the glory over each of you and i release it into your home homes <laughs> hallelujah lord hallelujah thank you for your glory presence that's the, the other thing that's been such a game changer just releasing the glory of god just releasing the glory of god releasing the glory 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 where it's like just debilitating, where I just get to slumped over. And I'm like, I can't even move. I can't get out of this position or I'm going to fall on the ground. <laughs> but it will be all good. <laughs> it's all good. But that with just such a weighty presence is just it's so, it, I don't even know how to have words fully. It sometimes just feels like you, you're, you're not inhaling enough. I, like, I'm, am, I, am I breathing that thick glory? Lord, we thank you for your glory. Hallelujah. We want your glory. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you. I release your joy whew, and your peace. Hallelujah. That surpasses all understanding, but I thank you. Hallelujah for everything that you are doing. Thank you for using us, oh Lord. Thank you for your purposes and your plans. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to partner with you. Hallelujah. Taylor, there's also eight people in here, just FYI. Eight. <laughs> I'm about eight. I'm just going to say, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Does anybody have anything they need to add? Um, if you could just say it, that would just be better for me, please. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah Lord thank you Jesus okay everybody hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Holy Spirit thank you Papa hallelujah hallelujah glory 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 we are celebrating hallelujah let us celebrate the king hallelujah I think the Lord wants to do something special for Sunday but I'm not sure but I feel like it's something celebratory <laughs> Lord, we just thank you. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Uh, I'll I'll let you know early because I feel like it's something celebratory. I feel like it's also uh, uh, something unconventional. <laughs> it's unconventional. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like it's something to do with baking or cooking or something like that. I'm just sensing it right now. <laughs> but Lord, I just thank you. I'm excited. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for re releasing everything that you want us to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We worship you. We honor you forever. Hallelujah. And amen. Shalom, everybody. And I just speak dreams over you, peace over you. I'm excited to hear these dreams. Lord, I just thank you for everything you're doing. Um, Taylor, you're going to have to get your, your dreams together and you're going to have to uh, send us that because those dreams are on point and they need to be said. So, Hallelujah, shalom, and, and have a wonderful night, everybody.